Hey everyone. So today we're going to start the install of 16.04 Ubuntu on the Maz server. Complete rebuild. Um, it has already been completed. There's a couple things that I noticed that were different. Pretty much everything is the same as 14.04 though. So that video should be pretty good except for these few things. Uh, the network interfaces are different. So now we're calling them by you know firmware levels, code levels of some kind. So So they uh, have these weird codes instead of ETH0 and ETH1 you're gonna see them like this uh, it just so happens after a little bit of testing uh, the ENS33 is the one that's plugged into my public uh, network and the other one is used for the pixie boot so we'll talk about that when we set up the network interfaces file also to mention I couldn't get the install the install worked just fine from a USB flash drive but after I tried to boot the server it kept getting halted on checking the root file system that was created for some reason. I have no clue uh, what happened, uh, but I used that same ISO image and built a CD, put it in, installed it, it came up great, no problems. So maybe that was my issue, don't know. If you have that issue, uh, try a CD, it might work for you. Okay, so the server's installed. Now I have already, uh, the only, th different the only package that I installed other than basic server utilities was OpenSSH. Uh, you guys have seen it before I like to install Maz by hand so that's the only thing I installed. Um, I have already set up some of the basic files to save us some time on the video. Uh, let me show you the interfaces okay uh, like I said before they're named differently so you can use the same thing <clears throat> off the OpenStack site you can pretty much use uh, this information that I've given you before like this file but change that E0 and ETH1 uh, to the new schema and if you're not sure which one's which, you should be after your install because DHCP won't pick up an address or if you have them plugged in wrong. You know, you can go in and <laughs> ifconfig try to figure out uh, what's going on here. So that's different. Uh, I already changed it from the DHCP address that it picked up during the install to our usual 150 static address so I did that and rebooted I also did the install for Maz so I just did a um, sudo you know apt install Maz to get our newest version of Maz 2.0 uh, I, I, ins uh, I installed inload and I installed ATOP and I installed screen the, the, that's just stuff I like to install. Uh, I already entered the root setup command. So you don't, by the way, all the stuff on the site with repositories and things like that, you don't have to do all, any of that anymore. I don't want to do this cloud installer repository. I want to see what actually comes with the new version of Ubuntu first before we get into any of that. I did enter this create admin command to set up a, the initial account. It said something about it's going to discontinue that with the next version. So that might change in the future. Right now it still worked. Uh, pretty much did all this stuff. So let's get into the GUI. Looks pretty much the same on, under the covers. There, This, <clears throat> this stuff up here is kind of different. Uh, Let's go to the next page here. So, go, just going down the the site or documentation, I, I generated an SSH key. I took a look at the SSH key and it's still in root account over here. So, I added that. Uh, pretty much, yeah, I went through the settings and made sure that um, this is 1604. I've had that bug out on me before and say, you know, no valid uh, image found. We, I did go into images and hit apply so that it would it downloaded the images and downloaded them to the cluster. 
back to settings so we, we're seeing that we're seeing it in deploy that's all good don't care about windows uh, add your public DNS resolver in here hit save uh, that's public router that we use this all looks good storage leave it flat for now that's the default uh, we might get into that later because if I mean if we if we could actually support LVM on these boxes that would make you know adding storage things like that uh, moving stuff around a lot easier in the future but for now we'll just leave it defaults DHCP snippets not sure what that is yet but we might discover it later networks is much different now we're called fabrics um, there's really nothing to be done in here uh, it's just kind of a tally uh, it's I'm guessing it's to help you with VLAN support because everybody's going to want to do that at some time in you know I enterprise level uh, we don't need it uh, just leave it as it is zones we don't use zones we only have one hardware set DNS it did this by default notice there's no cluster tab uh, it just has DNS and it's serving a records from that card so and that's what we want so we'll see uh, I don't see anything for DHCP. I see this DHCP snippets, but we're going to find out how that works, I guess. But anyway, uh, again, images have been downloaded, and there's no nodes. So, this that was the basic setup uh, for the install. Didn't tweak much in the GUI at all. A couple IPs here and there, and that was it. So now, being adventurous, uh, I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to go... Uh, hit one of the power buttons on one of the nodes and just see what it does. The network setup and everything has not changed. Everything's plugged in the same way. Uh, well, I don't know what's going to happen. I, notice we didn't install either Wake or Wake on LAN or anything like that. I just want to see how the new configuration differs from the old configuration. Maybe it has things that you know the the old one didn't that we won't need to set up anymore you know do we need to put in IP tables do we need to do all this other stuff to get it to work we're gonna find out so I'm gonna go hit the power button we'll see what happens I'll be back so the first boot failed surprise uh, there's stuff that we're we missed and it's a new GUI so we'll figure it out uh, check out networks let's go into the fabric uh, so it's calling the fabric, it's saying, it's calling it a VLAN, which, uh, whatever, but uh, we're going to go into this VLAN. It does have DHCP disabled. What can we do with it? You can provide DHCP. And here's where you set the ranges, I guess, now. So, dynamic, okay, uh, our gateway is actually 100. Can you set static anywhere? Well, let's just hit that. Okay. DNS should be the same thing, I would think. but maybe this will supply it. Alright, uh, let's see if that helps us out. I'll go try to boot it again. So that did the trick. Enabling that DHCP allowed it to boot. Uh, it came up really quick. Uh, the right version was installed and this is node 1. I went ahead and powdered on node 2. It's coming up now. So let's take a look at the node. So we'll set this to week on LAN. Oh, there's a manual option now. And doesn't look to be awake on LAN. Interesting. So I guess we'll set it to manual.
Okay. All this stuff happens in the commission phase. So I'm not too worried about that yet. Looks like you can just change the name up here. I don't like it that we can't use Wake on LAN. Kinda sucks. Eh. Maybe we can figure something out. Anyway. Here's node 2. It's up. Ready to go. We'll see how this manual power stuff works out. And let's just go ahead and try to commission that first one. Give it a second, see what happens. Oh, uh, you're in manual mode, it's not going to boot up, so I'm going to have to go power that up as well. Be right back. Well, the good news is, uh, when you hit power, it does look to be commissioning, doing some work. It's starting to see things about the server. It should see that it has two cores, but whatever. Um, it also looks like it is getting out to the internet just fine. You can see it on the console. Uh, it's actually able to get out to the archives and pull stuff. So no IP tables, none of that port forwarding, things like that. So that does look to be much cleaner. Um, the power thing, kind of, eh, I don't know about that. We'll uh, we'll see if we can get around that somehow. Uh, worst comes to worst, we can enter uh, either weight commands from the command line to bring those nodes up. So let's take a look. You can tag your VLAN right here. Storage. Another storage rotary. <laughs> uh, okay, so they commission. So that's good. So that pretty much completes our MAS install for the new version. Um, I'm going to go through and bring in all the nodes, rename them. Uh, get ready to go, and then on the next video, we'll see what we can do about putting OpenStack on this. And I'll let you know if I find anything else out weird, but so far, so good. So thanks for watching, guys.